What's going on everybody? With the club championships in full swing and the first five already completed, I wanted to take a look at really how similarly the top players have been playing so far this year. Now, the community, with good reason, has been very vocal about how stale the meta has been so far this year, along with years past. It's no secret that the New England Patriots playbook has dominated so far this year with the rise of Trips tight end, along with plays like Pat Sale and Pat's Curl Flat, uh, leading it to be the playbook of choice for even, you know, gun bunch enthusiasts over West Coast, which has repeatedly seen nerfs over the past couple of years, although it is still seeing some play, uh, like T. Davis, who took down the Cardinals club championship with it. However, the bottom line is that through five club championships and 20 competitors, 60% of them have used the New England Patriots playbook on offense. In comparison, no other playbook has been selected more than once. In terms of only the winners, the breakdown's the same in that three out of the five winners so far have used the Patriots playbook on offense, with the other two playbooks being used, the Seahawks and West Coast. Now, this video is mainly going to focus on the offensive side of the ball, but I will throw out that almost every single competitor was running 335 odd linebacker cross three show two, with the exception of someone like K Mac from the Cardinals Club who was running a lot of big nickel. With the recent patch on November 20th, it seems as though 335 odd has been nerfed, so it remains to be seen how the defensive meta will shake out moving forward. Uh, this could lead to an even larger rise of something like nickel normal which had been gaining some more and more steam and was seen prominently in the eagles club championship from figgy now jumping into the offensive data and the play calls of the winners we can notice a few things one is that shotgun still reigns supreme to any type of under center scheme at the moment in madden 19. A nerfs to good under center formations such as jumbo heavy with the wide receiver wing package, a deuce close with the slower wham motion along with the recent patching of the trick to cancel the auto motion altogether, among other things means that under center has just been phased out for the most part. Uh, all that stuff also in addition to the pretty porous pass blocking in that you know with block sheds uh, it's really hard to get a passing game going from under center. Really. Uh, the only time these players are ever going to under center is either in the red zone, short yarded situations, or to chew clock. Now, three of the players are primarily gun bunch users, although a cool distinction can already be drawn between J Wall and someone like Joe Rice. Now, even though they both use the Patriots playbook, J Wall shows no inclination of wanting to go into gun bunch and primarily stays in trips tight end, while Joe Rice is quite the opposite and only goes into trips tight end really to run the ball for the most part. The same could be said for someone like Figgy, who although his most called play was the trips tight end inside zone, that's literally all he was calling whenever he was in that formation. Despite a lot of guys running the same playbook in similar formations, with the exception of Deliverance, uh, no two players had the same play as their most called play. Uh, leading up to this point, most would say that a play like Pat Sale or Mesh Post would be the most popular plays in the game, when in reality most of these guys want to pound the rock a decent amount. Now there are several factors in this, the biggest being that generally there's one run in a formation that is more effective than the others, so that's the one that gets called every time. So as opposed to you know you having multiple good passing plays, usually a formation there's one best running play and it's just more practical to use that one every single time you want to run the ball. This along with game flow can definitely skew some of the play calling, so it's largely dependent on both the amount of runs in the formation along with how the game is going. Now, you'll generally see more variation in the run game play calling from someone who wants to run a single back scheme as they have a plethora of viable runs between tosses, stretches, dives, you know, 26 duo, stuff like that. Also, let's not gloss over just how committed Deliverance is to his read option slash X under scheme uh, with those two plays encompassing 60 of his 73 play calls. Now if we take it a step further and look at play calls by down, we can get a closer look into each player's play style. In this case, there seems to be a common factor. Run the ball on early downs to set yourself up for manageable down and distance situations going forward. This is the same thinking as pretty much every NFL offense and shows that the approach reigns supreme in Madden as well. Even guys like Jay Wall and Figgy, who love to air it out, ran the ball a decent amount on first down. Now second down is where everything shifts. We go from all five having a rushing play at the top of their list to now all having passing plays. Technically, Joe Rice and T. Davis have multiple plays at the top of both of their lists, which both include some running plays, but the shift in approach is still there. Even with this shakeup, the players still don't have any top plays in common. Uh, you can see plays like trips tight end inside zone and gun bunch verticals on multiple lists, 
but the most common plays are all different for the most part. This could be used to argue that different play styles, despite using similar formations, may not be as similar as we previously thought. Looking at third and fourth down play calls, there's a lot of carryover from second down. Something I was impressed with was both Joe Rice and T. Davis' flexibility in their play calling. We can see that Figgy preferred plays like Pat Sale and Corner Strike, while J. Wall liked Double and Sale and PA Counter Go, as opposed to T. Davis and Stick or Mesh Post. Each player had their own unique play style in terms of their play selection and adjustments. Now let's take a look at some of the passing stats. We can see that there are some common elements in most of the winners. A high completion percentage along with a yards per attempt of around 11 to 12 yards. Joe Rice bucked that trend a little bit in that he averaged almost 5 yards per attempt more than everybody else at the sacrifice of a lower completion percentage, which is something that you would expect. Still, with the completion percentages ranging from 72 to 86, we can see that these players operate at an insane level of efficiency throughout their matches. Something that may be a surprise is the lack of scoring through the air. You would expect someone like Jay Wall or Joe Rice to throw for more than one or two touchdowns over the course of two games with how proficient they are through the air. This leads us to the rushing stats where we can see scoring was much more prevalent and to some amount of surprise. They all for the most part ran just as much as they passed. The biggest anomaly here was Jay Wall, who was a good bit more pass heavy than the others, but a 40 to 60 run pass ratio is still probably lower than what would have been expected from a guy who airs it out so much. The success percentage column indicates what percentage of their runs were considered successful. So in this context, a successful run means you got 40% of the yardage needed for a first down on first down, 60% of the yardage needed on second down, or that you got a first down or a touchdown on whether it was third or fourth down. This mainly shows how well you were able to stay on schedule and keep good down and distance situations throughout the game. Generally, a higher success rate is indicative of someone who controls the game and has a much higher chance of winning. A good case of this could be Noonan against Figgy in the championship of the Eagles Club Series. Noonan had a 65% success rate on the ground and was really in control for the majority of the game until Figgy made a great game-winning drive at the end of the game, scoring with 49 seconds left to win it. Staying on the topic of good game management, we can see the average distance needed per down for each player throughout their tournaments along with their conversion rates. We can see some interesting correlations here. Guys like Joe Rice, Figgy, and T. Davis did great jobs of setting themselves up for manageable second and third down situations, which was reflected in their conversion percentages being near or above 50% for all three of them. This juxtaposed against Deliverance and J-Wall, who on average were looking at needing three or four more yards come third down, shows how big of an effect that has on keeping drives alive. Now, granted, this is Madden, and most players will be going forward on fourth down anyways, which is why the fourth down conversion rates are super interesting. Now, disregarding T. Davis, who only faced one fourth down throughout his games, uh, we can see that despite generally having a longer distance to go, conversion rates were higher than third down despite the shorter distance. I'm not sure whether to attribute this to offensive players being more willing to open up their offense and go to their best setups for conversions, or if defensively guys psych themselves out on fourth down and just aren't able to make the play to get the turnover. Now let's go back to the passing game for a little here and look at who these players like to throw the ball to. Across the board, wide receivers were the most targeted personnel group through the air, which really comes at no surprise, but there was a stark contrast in other areas. We can look at someone like Jay Wall, who threw 31% of his targets to his halfback out the backfield, as opposed to someone like Figgy, who used the same exact playbook but never targeted his backs in either of his games. There are multiple reasons this could be. In this instance, I think it is mainly because Trips Tight End is a formation that lends itself more to throwing to the backs due to Double End Sail and PA Counter Go being two of the most popular passing plays out of that formation, and both involving common setups of the halfback attacking the flat. This in comparison to Figgy's bunch play style where he does a lot of max protection and thus has nobody to throw to except really for his wide receivers. Now taking this a step further, we can look at exactly which routes each player targets throughout their games. So far this year in Madden, post and deep crossing routes have been some of the more prevalent routes to shape a scheme around. These are certainly popular, but we can see the difference in offensive approaches between guys like Joe Rice, who throws a lot of post routes and crosses, 
versus J Wall, who throws a lot of shallow routes like drags and flats, versus Figgy, who focuses on a lot of high low reads over the middle between drags and posts, versus Deliverance, who throws a lot of quick crossing routes like slants and drags, where he tries to throw whichever one you don't pick with your user. There are a few routes, such as posts, flats, corners, and hitches, that were thrown by each competitor, but then you have routes like slants, which were Deliverance's most thrown route, but was only thrown by Figgy in terms of the other four competitors. It is not surprising that Deliverance had some super unique route stats, as he was the only one to not run Gun Bunch or the standard trips tied in, but it's still cool to see the different styles between everybody else as well. Now the last stat I want to look at is the average depth of target and average yards after catch. It's interesting in that generally the average depth of target lies between 6 and 9 yards, and then there's Joe Rice, who was slinging it almost 15 yards downfield per throw. Now this goes hand in hand with the previous stats we talked about, with him having the highest yards per attempt along with the lowest completion percentage. T. Davis having the lowest depth of target is supported by flat and wheel routes headlining his most thrown routes. J. Wall being at around 7.5 yards is interesting with his most thrown routes being flats and drags, but he threw enough other routes such as deep corners and deep crosses to bring his average up. The most interesting thing might be how similar all of the average yards after catch is between everybody with them all being between 5 and 6 yards. Most routes either get tackled right away or get no yards after catch if it's a sideline catch as opposed to shallow crossing routes where you might have an opportunity to spin and make a guy miss. So in the end, what does all of this mean? I think despite most players running the same playbooks and similar sets on offense, if we look hard enough we can certainly derive that each player has their own unique playstyle. Whether it be the plays they call, when they call them, the routes they throw, or whatever it may be, each player has their own identity. In an ideal world, there would be more playbook and formation diversity, but in the landscape that we have right now, that's just not always the case. One thing we can appreciate is that these players operate at an incredibly high level of efficiency and know their schemes like the back of their hands. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take it easy.